Hello viewers of Lira Scoop. I hope you are fine. I'm called a non job, also known as DJ Uncle Fives. A name I've carried for some good time since uh, around 2016. Yeah, I, I hail from Kole district, uh, specifically in a place called Akalo. Yeah, that's where I come from. Okay, thank you very much, Job. Could you help us let us know what initially inspired you to join music as a DJ? Uh, when I was at campus, uh, I was very passionate about music. I used to like collect a lot of music. Uh, all my neighbors would always come looking for new music for me uh, and nice music. And I didn't have any like idea that one day maybe like I would be a DJ in future or something. It was just about uh, about me loving music. So I kept collecting this music and in, in 2015 I was in South Sudan and I was always having a lot of free time at work. You know sometimes business can, can be low. So I would have a lot of time to experiment with our computer. And I started experimenting with the softwares for DJing and yeah, I, I learned DJing from there slowly, slowly, just the software of course. I never had any passion about playing music somewhere, maybe professionally. So 2016, I met BP and uh, BP actually inspired me to now like cement, cement it like to be part of me because like he loved my kind of music, like the taste of music I had. And from then now, like I, since he was also doing music, and I was like, yeah, maybe we can complement each other, and we start on from there. And and that's how like I started it slowly, slowly. Yes, maybe at first when you started, what was the perception? How did people perceive your service as a DJ? And what, how was the feedback? You know, like uh, you know, for me, <laughs> I I don't know whether it was just a blessing. I never had opportunity to actually be an upcoming DJ. Because like the first time I was playing music like professionally, I played music when I was a guest, like the biggest man of the night, but I'd never played music anyway. It was always me just experimenting with my non-stops. So when I got opportunity to, <laughs> to be a guest DJ, I was very nervous, but, but like I, I, I enjoyed it because, and first of all, I didn't even know what to play because you know, like when you make non-stops, you don't know what people dance out there. Mm. I just went and played whatever I had. I was playing music that people didn't know actually. You're saying he doesn't know people whether people were going to dance all the music, the kind mm. of people dancing in clubs. Mm. Does it mean that you were kind of a church boy? You never stepped in clubs. You know, like uh, you know, campus can force you to do things even that you have never done before. So at campus, I also got opportunity to experience uh, the nightlife. Uh, I would also go to the bar once in a while. Much as I used not to drink, I was I'm, I'm like. I'm from a like a Christian family, like we are deeply rooted in Christianity and it was never a part of us. But so, but but peer pressure yeah. took when, me there. Which year was that if you have to remember that you played you played music as a guest DJ for your first time and could you could be an upcoming DJ but all of the sudden you were the guest <laughs> DJ. It was twenty seventeen, uh, it was a uh, celeb spot uh, I remember MC Dogo had like some celebrity kind of uh, an, like event that would happen like on a monthly basis. He invited me as part of it, and I went there. It was really, really, really an, an an awesome experience. People showed me so much love, even without like knowing the songs I was playing. Does that make it one of your most memorable moment or event you have played in? So my most memorable event was. Uh, uh, when I won the DJ battle, when was that? It, it was it was 2019, 2019 around February, uh, when Sam Samu organized a DJ competition at the Mayor's Garden. It had over 1,000 people. Like you know, like I wasn't into like the, the like. The, like the crowd kind of thing. Like I wasn't yet playing music like on a commercial basis. It was something like just passion. Yeah, I wasn't doing it so, like, so professionally, but since I was making lots of non-stops and I had all the big machines, actually, I think I was one of the DJs that had the best machines back then. So I had a lot of time to practice and that day it changed everything. 
actually I think it's a day, it's a day that I cemented my my, my fit in this industry. Look, looking at those plans, uh, mm. what was your favorite genre of music that you could enjoy playing most? Uh, I think it was Afro swing. Uh, like uh, those guys of of UK, yeah. they they introduced some sort of genre. It was a fusion of rap and uh, and Afro pop. Yeah. I loved it so much. I loved it. Uh, the likes of B Young. Uh, yeah, we used to enjoy so much with the late BP. It was my favorite genre. I enjoyed playing it so much. Uh, looking at all those achievements and all, all the efforts you have been doing, uh, and we have heard of a rumor that you are quitting or you are leaving the gym and venturing into something else. What could have inspired you or like, triggered your decision to leave the gym? Ah, you know, like the gang is something that is very fun. You know, like it's a, it's an art whereby you 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 have the room to be creative. So I loved it so much. But it's it's it has just been a calling. It's it has been a calling from God because like uh, the voice has been very loud to me lately. God has been uh, reminding me of who I am, where I come from. Yeah, because I'm from church. And lately, uh, I'm a cell pastor at my church. So, like, I didn't want to do things that are, like, contradicts my faith. You know, like, I have so many people at church who look up to me, and very many young people out there. And I didn't, like, God just, I felt like just what I was doing wasn't making my father proud. But Playing music in the bar uh, with the perception that it's, uh, it's feeding my family, but I got to think, like I, I sat down and was thinking and I realized actually it's God who is feeding my family, not me. What if I die on the way going there to play music at the bar, will I still feed the family? It's still the same God who is protecting, protecting me out there. I was like, let me just go back home. God is going to give me something else to do to still take care of that same family that I was thinking about. And I be also doing things that honor my father in heaven. So I decided, if I'm to play music, I can only play music for Jesus. For Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say, uh, finally, let's say I have my introduction next week. Can you help me play music as a DJ? If you want gospel music, I'm going to play for you. Actually, yesterday, someone wanted to give me a very big, a very big uh, gig for for traditional marriage, but I'd already, but I'd already made a decision on Tuesday. God already knew, because like the program was for December, so it meant like if I was to. I take that, I would have to still continue up to the end of the year. Let's say it's not a church thing and it's not something related to church. Could you help him? Ah, uh, no, no, no. I'm done now with secular music. You're done? I'm done. And you know, like, it's something like mentally I prepared for it. Yes. It's not like that, just edition that you wake up that, ah, today I'm quitting. Because mm. like, S-Man, I cannot. DJing is really, really fun. Like, I really enjoy so much. Even last Saturday I was playing music still at my former workplace, Vintage. Uh, for how long have you been waiting for this day? I think uh, I think it has been some time, like over two years. When I, I was always like, ah, if I get some alternative source of income, I'm going to quit. But you know, like it became a song. I was like, that moment will never arrive. If I keep like perceiving it that way, I'm going to do the thing for the rest of my life. So I just like, I was like, let me have faith in God. Let, let me live now, even when I don't have that option that I've always been waiting for. Because what shows that I, I'm trusting God if, I, if I'm still waiting for an alternative which is not provided by God? So I decided to, to, to just trust God and live what is not making him happy. Which means this has been a gradual process yeah. and it's not something sudden. Yeah, yeah, it has been gradual. And have you tried to share this with some of your fans outside? No, like uh, I still wanted to first let the most important people in my life get to know about it. Yeah. So like, uh, like I disclosed to my family, uh, my church members, uh, some of my close friends, but now it's official to everyone out there. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you're talking about the family, coming from that family that, that believes so much in, in God. Mm. Uh, how were they feeling before when you were still a DJ? You know, like people were really disappointed in me, uh, most especially my big brother who supported my education. Uh, he was not, he, he was usually 
never happy about it because you know like uh, this this bar bar job I was doing I, you get money and even the money doesn't have any fruits I don't know whether the money is not blessed or what <laughs> like would just always come with so many problems so they would be like you're working but we are not seeing like the fruits of it so like m most people at home were actually not happy about it they wanted me to pursue my, my career as a psychologist because that's what I studied at campus so my family has never been comfortable with it uh, I believe you might have shared with them about the the news about quitting and how are they like treating you right now? Everyone was very happy. Everyone was very happy. But lately, like the atmosphere had changed because uh, you know, like I've been very active in church, and somehow, like it changed their perception about me. Much as I was still going out at night to play music, because like I would explain to them that it's paying school fees for my son, but. Uh, but now that I've disclosed to them, like that final edition, everyone is very happy about it. And they're all praying uh, for me. Like everyone is actually having a very, giving me a very positive feedback. Okay. Did you find any challenge or obstacle like, for you to leave the game? No, it, is, it was just God's calling. You know, like uh, at Vintage, I was uh, among the highest paid DJs. Wow. And uh, the entire staff loved me so much. They showed me so much love and support. And whenever I would need them, they would always come through for me. Like, it was just God. I didn't have any challenges. Much as the nightlife, I wouldn't say that it's a, it's a beautiful one. Because, you know, like sometimes when I'm going home, uh, you, sometimes you meet thieves on the way. Sometimes even you find dead bodies by the roadside, like thieves that have been beaten. And sometimes even they throw stones at you, like on a border. So, like, it's, a, it's not a safe kind of life. But mine was actually just God's calling. That was the basis. Yeah, looking at your next journey, uh, what are you planning to do since like you have left the jail? Do you have, have you secured some job anywhere? I decided to trust on God. <laughs> you know, like uh, the reason why I've always been doing it for for some good time, I was like, I'm still looking for an alternative. I'm looking for an alternative, and that moment never arrived. So I decided to just trust God. He has already, I have already the basics, I have, I have my academic documents, I have my, some small money that I can start a small business for now with it that can sustain me and my family. So I'm starting on from there, but mostly I'm relying on God, I'm trusting so much in God that He has bigger plans for me. Basically looking at music, and you know music or entertainment is God. Yeah. Like, could you say you are living entertainment or music for all or you are participating in other fields as well you know like i would really let go down if i say like i'm quitting like uh djing because you know like it's also one of the ways that i use to minister yeah i've been always making gospel mixes for some good time and i the main aim was always to uplift those who are struggling in life you know sometimes uh, life really hit us so much and these songs can really encourage us. So I, I'm going to continue with Christian music uh, to encourage people out there and also to spread the good news of Jesus out there. Wow. Uh, won't you miss any aspect of DJing? I can do everything I want with DJing in, in Jesus because I can still scratch, I can do whatever I, I, I was doing in the world, also in church. So okay. I'll, be, I'll be now doing things the right way. Okay, thank you very much. We understand you had a level called Capstone Capstone Radio or Capstone Record Level like that. Mm. Uh, do, uh, are we still lifting this brand up or we are abandoning it? No, you know like uh, I have Capstone Radio which is an online radio. Yes. Uh, I, have, I, have, I have a friend of mine who got shares and she's running it. Yes. But for me, mostly I'd focus so much on, on Capstone Music Inc. And you know, like back then, my artists were doing secular music, but they all started saying they want to do Christian music. And some of the old just went like, went mute, but like we are reviving it right now with a, a, a new energy that also now I have like to push the gospel of Jesus out there. So we are going to be doing Christian music. It's going to be strictly Christian music. How many artists do you have under Capstone Radio? I mean, Capstone Music Inc. Uh, uh, yes, Capstone yeah. Music Inc. I, I have uh, Sharon Natura, yeah, who is uh, a very good vocalist. Then uh, I have uh, Christy, Christy Angel. 
Yeah, she also does gospel. She has been doing uh, gospel music for some time. Yes, looking back, uh, how do you feel about your journey as a DJ? Was it a good decision? Yeah, I think uh, I did it all out there. Like, yeah, most of like the top DJs, like when I tell someone, man, I'm quitting, they're like, man, why, why? Right now, when you have the, like, you are one of the biggest brands we have in the, in this part of the country, and you're saying you're quitting after all the assets for build. You know, like building a brand is not yeah. easy. I'm, I think I'm satisfied because I'm happy. Yes, looking at mm. all those, do you mm. have any regret? I don't have any regret because, like, right now everything makes sense. That, like, I think God is the one who wanted me to pass from that line and arrive here. Yeah, as we move forward. What advice would you give someone who is aspiring to be a teacher? I would tell them, you know, people had a negative, negative attitude towards DJing. Like DJs, I think it's just a lifestyle kind of thing. Like the way they they see DJs do their lives. Uh, you know, the, the the drugs, the alcohol, the women. Like give people a, a very wrong perception about DJs. But for me, <laughs> I think also God wanted me to be there and show that we can also be different. If you would return to DJ, mm. like, what's that thing that you never repeat? Okay. Uh, but but I, I don't think, I can never return. <laughs> I can, it, it's a one-way traffic. Yeah. You, you cannot go to God and you go back to the devil. Yes, okay, I understand. <laughs> mm. Okay, you have been in this industry, mm. and I believe you, you are no stranger right now. Mm, yeah, true. Yeah, true. you have a, lo a lot of things to, to tell her, and you have a lot of experiences to share out. Mm. Uh, what do you think the technology, technology has done in the game or in the entertainment industry? You know, right now, technology has made anyone to act, like can easily become a DJ. People don't take time now like to master the art. Anyone who can make a transition of one song to another uh, and has a laptop, they start calling themselves DJs. People have a, like people no longer go to DJ academies or like they would want to learn from professionals. Like, because like some of us, like we really, really went through serious training. Like for me, I did mine online. No one taught me it was strictly online. And I mastered the art of DJing, all the aspects because I wanted to be good at it. So I would tell them like, uh, I, I, would, I would just say technology has made thing anyone can now be a DJ. Do you think we have some common misconceptions that people know about DJs, is about DJs? Uh, that we <laughs> humanize us, <laughs> that DJs are humanize us. But for me, yeah. from, from my years of DJing, yeah. uh, I was with my own one, one woman only. I never. I never messed around like I, you know, for me, I always respect people so much. I wouldn't want to waste someone's time and I don't want to do something to someone that I wouldn't want them to do it to me. So uh, it's just a misconception. Not every DJ is the same. I never, had, like I wasn't doing alcohol. I wasn't into women. I wasn't into drugs and all that kind of lifestyle. Also, I kept it always simple. Not that thing of like elevating yourself to some level whereby you look down on other people. Like I was a commoner. We was just a celebrity. I never messed up. I never. I don't have any regrets. It's something that I did and I regretted as a DJ, because like uh, I remember when there was a time I was doing some small alcohol. Uh, I was a, a brand ambassador for Pilsner in yes. Northern Uganda, yes. and they gave me that job when I I was actually not drinking, and it was lockdown, man. I was de desperate that time, and they were giving me one million per month, man. You know, lockdown now it was very hard on us, man. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, my business was crawling, man. I was financially limping. I was like, nah, man, let me just take this job. I, I thought they wouldn't like force me to drink. Actually, it wasn't even the company that forced me. They didn't know I wasn't drinking. But now like the fans were like, ah, oh, man, you're, you're advising us to drink yet for you, don't drink. So I was like, okay, let me be taking one bottle. <laughs> like, uh, I found myself drinking. Yeah. But like, since I've always had God in me, like, the spirit would always like help me to, uh, to like to 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 to, to, to like no, get to know how to go about such, yeah. mm. and I overcame it. Please, we thank God for all the experiences you have. Yeah, your life as a DJ. Mm. As we conclude, in summary, mm. what's the what's that interesting like lesson you have learned as a DJ? As we conclude, I I learned that actually like in, uh, like uh, uh, DJing. Not just DJing, like any 
creative, like anyone in the creative arts industry, if you take it very serious, you'll end up with a very big social capital. And when you have purpose, it can elevate you to higher levels. Right now, I have so many friends that would really, really, really make things easier for me. If like, I have to make another step in life, people are there that can, I can always reach out to because of the social capital I got from DJing. And I kept my discipline, which actually helped me, I think, so much to have those people in my life. Okay, how do you feel about the gap you have left behind? I think the young generation, they are ready to take over. Uh, there are so many young DJs now with potential. Mm. And I have faith in them. If you are if you're saying about so many young DJs, like, could you ever say some of the few? Man, I have DJ Storm. Storm has so much potential. And it's somehow, he has some traits that, that are like mine. Because also he doesn't drink. Yeah, I don't think he's into j jumping from one woman to another. And he has, he, he, like, he's passionate about education. He's focused, most especially, he's focused in life. He knows what he wants to do in life. And I think very soon also he'll become like me. He'll we'll, we'll join me in the other, other side of life. We, we mix for Jesus. But that is someone like I'm really, really proud of that I know is going to it's going to like still keep the industry running because we have already legends. Those of Val, I don't, I don't know mention their name. Those are now big people, like um, yeah. Yeah, we are, we are talking about the aspiring. The, 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 yeah, we have we, we have a storm. We have uh, uh, Fizz Baby. His name kind of looks like mine. Yeah. Since now I'm no longer there, I think he'll now carry the <laughs> carry the name yeah. also. Yeah. Uh, then there's Tompo. Tompo also is good. There's DJ Young. Kazo is big, I don't compare him among those ones. Uh, yeah, there are so many young DJs, those of China there. But there are some very disciplined DJs like Simple Dickens. Yeah, those are kids I really, really, I really loved while I was DJing. Yeah, very humble. And I'm just advising the young DJs, be humble. Trust me, in this life, when you die, they're going to write 1990. 94 to 2000 something and there'll be a dash inside that dash you have to make sure what what are you going to do in that dash make sure what you're doing in this dash is something that is valuable that on your when you're gone it's going to be remembered for it for, for something good and also above all always put god first okay uh, please uh, one more question mm -hmm. i'm seeing you are uh, you are entering into another line mm -hmm. uh, don't you see any challenge coping up with new friends in the trend you are starting now? Ah, but, but for me people accept, accepted me as I was. You know, like I was someone who was always balancing church and, 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 and the bar life. People would never put me on pressure to, to take alcohol. On Monday I was playing music at a glass. That's the last time I played music actually, secular music. Uh, and I was with MC Cash Wakabi. We were, we were to host the night together. We were supposed to go to the bar, we went to Amazon. I, I, I was taking my water. I was in a company, but for me I was taking water. People are taking their drinks, me I take my water. Like, I think like people already accepted me the way I was. So it is a very easy transition for me. And for me even before DJing like actively, I wasn't so much into the nightlife. So it's a very easy transition for me. If maybe I was addicted to the nightlife, it would make the transition very challenging for me. Wow. Yeah. We have shared a lot and there could be something interesting we'd love to share out but I have not asked you in that line. Could you use this opportunity to share out with your fans and fellow friends outside there? I just want to tell everyone thank you for loving me so much. There was so much love shown out there. Whenever I was playing music, everywhere I played music, you guys showed me so much love. There's always like genuine friendship out there. Like I really appreciate everything that like, you guys did for me. And I'll never forget each and everything that guys, you, you guys have done for me from winning the DJ competition. It was the crowd that made me win it. Uh, like I don't have the, enough words to thank everyone for what they did for me, but I'm more than grateful and may God bless each and everyone. And my last word is, please, prioritize God. Prioritize on your relationship with God. In the end, this life, we are just visitors here. Yeah, we are just like flowers. Anytime the wind can blow your way. So make sure it ends when you have a good relationship with your Father in heaven. So thank, thank you. you. I appreciate it. I wish you well. Thank you, Lira Scoop.